Hi, Section 6, OTP. In this section, we're going to start our series about OTP. We'll do a brief introduction to OTP and proceed to explore its behavior set, which is comprised of a series of patterns for building robust applications. We'll then finalize the section by exploring the structure of an Elixir OTP application. And with that, let's move on to the first video, Introduction to OTP. In this video, we'll do a quick introduction to OTP by answering three questions. What is OTP? Why do we need it and why should we use it? And how can we use it in Elixir? Starting with the first question, the what. We need to trace back the origins of OTP. Elixir, as you probably know by now, is a language that runs on the same virtual machine as Erlang, the Beam. It's fair to say that although Elixir has a personality of its own, it's still a descendant of Erlang at heart. OTP is something you often see associated directly to Erlang. It stands for Open Telecom Platform, due to the origins of Erlang as a language designed for programming telephone switches at Ericsson. But don't let the name make you think that it's only suitable for that purpose. It can be seen as an intrinsic part of Erlang and not targeted at Telco software at all. But what does it stand for anyway? OTP can be seen basically as both a framework for structuring applications and how they should be launched and operate in a shared environment, as well as a series of design patterns, also called behaviors, that implement common generic use cases for using processes. Think of it as having the same meaning of design patterns in object-oriented languages. The next question is thus, why should we care to use OTP at all? Apart from the framework and some of the tools of Erlang that we've seen so far, We've been fine with developing our applications without caring too much for OTP at all. Let me show you this example then, which you should probably already be familiar with after having learned about processes. This module defines the innards of a process which serves as a counter. We have a create function that serves as a means of spawning the process and setting its initial state. In this case, it starts with the counter at zero. We also have a function that gets calls after spawning the process and whose only purpose is to receive messages, process them, update the process state if necessary, and call itself back again to receive more messages. And finally, we have a series of functions whose purpose is to expose an interface for manipulating set process states or query it. And even with all this code, there are still some considerations we didn't care for, like timeouts for sync calls, for querying the state, unknown messages the process might receive, eventual crashes, and the fact that the calling party may not exist anymore when the process eventually replies. All these are potential pitfalls that fortunately the designers of Erlang thought about and decided to implement a series of design patterns or behaviors in Erlang. These behaviors aid in solving the common use cases for the language. In our particular example, this process could have been implemented by using a behavior from OTP, the generic server or gen server. And we can see how our counter code translates neatly into a gen server on the right. It might initially seem like a bit more code, but notice how its structure is much nicer and we can actually implement the additional timeouts and handle other messages in a far more easy way using the gen server approach versus our native process. So this should give you a good indication on why we should strive to use OTP. So besides our gen server example, how exactly can we get the most out of the OTP features in Elixir? To tell you the truth, if you've been following the course and coding some examples on the side, you'll notice we've been actually using OTP the entire time. We use OTP via the Elixir toolset when we build and import applications using Mix. We also use OTP via Erlang features, as you've seen with the ETS, DTS and Nisha examples, as well as some cryptographic functions that too are part of the OTP and available via Erlang modules. And finally, you've seen the small example of the gen server behavior, though there are a few more to explore, so I won't spoil the surprise. It's OTP that actually provides the building blocks for achieving distributed, scalable and robust applications in Elixir.